Fox 29 is WFLX TV, West Palm Beach. Now, South Florida and the Treasure Coast's only primetime newscast. Live, this is the 10 o'clock news. The body of a young boy is pulled from the St. Lucie River only hours after he and his sister drowned submerged in a truck that became their coffin. Hello, everyone. More on that story in a moment. But first, it chased families out of their homes in Belle Glade. Now, Mercury sends students into the night at Florida Atlantic University. Traces of Mercury forced students at FAU to evacuate to Boca Raton. Police say this is the third discovery in less than one week. Sally Lewis joins us now, first and live from the FAU campus with more. Sally. Jeff and Leslie, I'm standing in front of Hemina, uh, Seminole Hall on the FAU campus. This is the dormitory that has been evacuated since 1 o'clock this afternoon. You can see by the tape all around the building that nobody is allowed back inside any of the entrances until they are told that everything is okay. Members of a hazardous materials company surveyed the mercury a little while ago along with a member of the DEP. They have determined that mercury was dumped or spilled on the second floor and then it spilled onto the first floor, meaning students won't be allowed back inside until air quality tests show there is no mercury vapor in the air. What happened with this us? Are you living in 20? I live on the first floor, okay. one of three. Uh, what this we'll FAU is junior is one of the 18 students living in Seminole Hall this weekend, told she couldn't go back in. I know. I had no idea what was going on. And then we've been sitting out here since quarter to one, and now it's like 410. So, and I just want to know if, if can we go back in or, you know, I just want to know what's going to happen. A handful of others sat outside wondering how long the wait would be. I wish they would hurry up because I'm tired and I have to go to work. FAU administrators say they'll pick up the tab for hotels, even if it means putting up the other 180 students expected back to the dorm tomorrow. The mercury was discovered by an RA who had been told to be on the lookout for the substance. Um, it was on the second floor stairwell and on the landing on both sides of the building. There was more on the west side. Police say they immediately sealed off the building and called in the hazardous materials unit. Our crews investigated. They found some mercury contamination inside the building and on both entranceways. We immediately sealed the building and have called for assistance through the Department of Environmental Regulations. Mercury has been discovered on campus in two other locations, Monday and Thursday. This time, it was several ounces. Right now, administrators are checking the chemistry and physics labs to see if any mercury is missing. They also suspect someone could be playing a prank on the university. If it's someone bringing it on campus and purposely doing this, we'll prosecute, prosecute to the full extent of the law. Hazardous materials experts have determined that students in the dorms since Wednesday could have received minimal exposure. Now, the students as a group are going to be monitored. Their health will, health will be monitored for the next month or so to make sure that they don't show any signs of uh, a rash or anything that could show that they've been exposed. The good news is for the students who've had their lives just torn apart this afternoon, they've been told that they may be allowed back into the dorm tomorrow night. They're going to be doing uh, air quality tests all day to tomorrow, and they're hoping that they're going to get the all clear for tomorrow night. We'll, of course, be keeping an eye on it. Back to you. Okay, so out in Bell Glade, it was months and months uh, before the families could go back in. Apparently, that doesn't seem to be the issue there. Well, in this case, they don't believe that anybody actually touched the mercury because they think it, it was on someone's shoe and that person walked through the dormitory. So when somebody hasn't touched it, I'm told, or eaten, put, put the mercury in their mouth, then it's less of a problem. And they're going to come in tomorrow and clean it up using special powder. For some reason, they don't think that this is as big of a problem because it's outside and air can get to it, so it's not closed in like a house like in Belle Glade. Okay. Okay, we'll check back. I'm sure you'll follow this story tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Sally Lewis reporting Thank from Boca. Thank you, Sally. Anguish and mourning in Port St. Lucie tonight after the body of a young boy is recovered from the St. Lucie River. He drowned with his sister when the truck they were in plunged into the murky waters. The mother and three other adults escaped. 10 o'clock news reporter William Giles was there as the painful recovery came to a close. The body of 12-year-old David John Deason Jr. was brought ashore at the Port St. Lucie Yacht Club around 11.45. It took a team of six sheriff's divers more than two hours this morning to find the body. And it was about 50 to 70 feet south and east of the crash site and uh, in about 13 feet of water, about 20 feet from the bank of the river. Authorities say the medical examiner at the scene indicated there were no obvious signs of trauma to the body. 
and that the boy probably drowned. Can we find my babies now? Can we find my babies now? Lynn Deason weeps uncontrollably. She's lost two children. The body of a four-year-old daughter, Amy Elizabeth, was pulled from the water last night. The children were riding in a four-wheel drive pickup truck with their mother and three other adults. The truck somehow ended up in the river. The driver reportedly ran for help after failing to save the children. He told 911, do you have people on the way there with dive gear because you're going to need it? And she said, no. He said, I have dive gear. She said, can you get it? He said, yes. She said, well, then go get it. The group was apparently driving off-road, very close to the riverbank at the time of the accident. That in itself could present legal troubles for the driver of the pickup. But it is illegal to be driving off-road, and um, it's something that we have at the Port St. Lucie Police Department um, brought to the attention of the public through the media several times in the last couple of years. William Giles reporting for Fox 29. The driver of that truck was given a blood alcohol test last night. Authorities say they should get the results in one to two weeks, and they say charges could be pending. A four-year-old girl dies tonight, the apparent victim of a brutal beating by her mother's 24-year-old boyfriend. Four-year-old Sasha Gibbons died early this evening at a Fort Lauderdale hospital. Her mother's boyfriend, Carlos Shank, told police he disciplined the girl yesterday for using profanity. He admitted to spanking her, washing her mouth out with soap, pouring hot sauce into her mouth, and finally wrapping her in a blanket and wedging her under a waterbed mattress. He's been charged with first-degree murder. Search teams are coming the area surrounding the Chattahoochee National Forest looking for a two-year-old girl missing since yesterday. The little girl disappeared while walking with her parents in the National Park outside Atlanta. U.S. Army Rangers, a National Guard helicopter crew, and a team of police dogs have joined in the search along with anybody willing to help. Uh, I've got a little uh, granddaughter that's about that age, so uh, uh, I just thought they might need help out there. I just hate to think of a little girl being out there in the middle of the night. The little girl was wearing a turtleneck and a denim jacket when she wandered off, not enough to keep her warm on a cold November night. Another killing in Miami in the same area where three prostitutes have been found strangled to death. Police won't say if the latest murder is the work of the same person, but they have reluctantly admitted that the three prostitute murders that have already been committed are definitely related. Police aren't saying how the latest victim died or whether she was a prostitute. West Palm Beach police spotted a stolen car this afternoon. They tried to pull it over, but the driver wouldn't cooperate. He allegedly took off westbound on Palm Beach Lakes Boulevard and tried to make a U-turn at Australian Avenue, where he hit two other cars. The driver and a juvenile passenger jumped out. They tried to run away, but the police caught the driver and a witness nabbed the juvenile. Okay, the people in Lake Worth are fired up over a rat-infested house they say is a favorite hangout among junkies. 10 o'clock news reporter Lisa Cabrera says the people want to know what the city of Lake Worth plans to do about it. But that house is the main concern right now because they're breaking the boards off and going there to smoke their crack. Residents in Southeast Lake Worth are fed up with the drugs and crime in their area, and they say the problem is fueled by abandoned houses used as shelters for young criminals. This area is known for crack cocaine. There's a lot of traffic in this area. Stuart Petrie says drug users break into the boarded up house near his and use it to sleep and have sex. But you can see from the condition of the house that it's not only an eyesore, as far as I'm concerned, it's a health hazard. Signs to keep out are posted on this house, which has been empty almost two years. This is the main entryway of the building, yet no one uses it because this building has been declared unsafe and been condemned by the city, yet we managed to climb through this window, which is just how everyone else is getting in, looking for a hideaway, a place not to be seen. Evidence litters the floor, blankets, lighters, used condoms, a Bible, and crack cocaine paraphernalia. There's holes there, to, it's like a pipe. Petri has complained to city managers who he says offer no results. It's a problem that won't go away with a few nails and boards. If it's been boarded up, it's probably already in the pipeline with code compliance. The mayor says there's a lot of red tape in destroying a house. The city must follow due process, like making sure the owner isn't planning renovations. There are places in this city that I wish I could just rent a bulldozer myself and bulldoze today, but you just can't do that with private property. Meantime, neighbors hope for their own security and continue to fight to destroy what they say is a threat to public safety. In Lake Worth, Lisa Cabrera for Fox 29. 
Okay, the mayor says that he has to track down the home's legal owner before anything can be done. He says you just can't order it torn down. Okay, the so-called suicide doctor, Dr. Jack Kevorkian, could face murder charges. This after another suicide in Michigan. His attorney says Kevorkian was present when Margaret Garish died this morning at her Royal Oak home. The Oakland County Medical Examiner says she died of carbon monoxide poisoning. He says the death is being classified as a murder because someone would have had to administer the deadly gas. A court order preventing Kevorkian from assisting in suicides expired yesterday. U.S. Air under close scrutiny after two emergency landings in one week. A twin-engine MD-80 was en route from Philadelphia to Boston last night when one of the engines lost oil pressure. The pilot was able to land safely. Another U.S. Air MD-80 had to make an emergency landing at the Raleigh-Durham Airport on Monday. The pilot of that flight reported trouble in the right engine and had to shut it down before making an emergency landing. A private plane is forced down into a highway in St. Louis. The pilot reported engine trouble just moments before touching down on Interstate 55. Drivers on the busy highway assisted in the landing, forming a barricade behind the plane to slow traffic down. Police say the emergency landing went incredibly well, considering the high volume of traffic this holiday weekend. That Turkish freighter that's been stranded on a Fort Lauderdale beach is back in the water tonight. The Furot was freed this morning and dragged out through a reef. It took several hours. The reef and the ship are being examined for damage. The freighter was anchored about one mile offshore when 10 to 15 foot seas from Tropical Storm Gordon beached it. The freighter had become quite an attraction for curiosity seekers. The latest fad in the office is not a new computer. It's not the fax machine. It's the Environmental Fund of Florida, a fund you may be asked to donate to in the workplace. Money will be used for everything from sea turtles to the Everglades. The new fund works the same as United Way and encourages employees to donate through payroll deductions. Okay, yeah. don't leave now. We have plenty more ahead for you here on the 10 o'clock news. The United Nations is making demands of peace as Bosnian Serbs take pot shots at NATO planes. An abortion clinic goes on the defensive, making its walls impenetrable. Well, this man can't even show his face. That's because he's been robbed by the sexy bandit. And Mara Largo comes alive with a party worth parking at. We'll take you inside and talk to the Donald and Marla on Fox 29, your 10 o'clock news station. Before the new Nissan Maxima became available to the public, it was tested on over a hundred specially replicated road surfaces at our proving grounds. This helped us in developing a unique suspension that allows the Maxima to ride smoother than an Acura Legend LS, yet out corner of BMW 540i, which means in a Maxima you'll own the road, whether it's smoothly paved or otherwise. The new Maxima from Nissan. When we talked to small businesses in the South, we heard that finding an easier way for customers to call would be greatly appreciated. Well, consider it done. Introducing Small Business 800 Service with call detail for an accurate listing of customer calls. Not surprisingly, it's from the communications company designed for small business, Southern Bell Small Business Services. Give us a call and watch how we're listening. 1-800-WE-HEAR-YOU. Okay, listen up. We've got 30 seconds to tell you about Park Furniture's wall-to-wall -wall clear out sale. Owners have ordered all 94 stock to be sold to the bare walls. Take advantage of this seven-piece living room package, only $7.99. Or this six-piece waterfall bedroom set, just $5.89. Check out Park Furniture's three-room, 21-piece condo package, on sale now for just $16.99. Park Furniture offers choice, service, a great selection for every room in your home, plus free same-day delivery. See the difference during the wall-to-wall -wall clear out at Park Furniture and Interiors, West Palm Beach and Green Acres. Dateline, October 1994. Florida State Study reports Oldsmobile the top-ranked make, the best make, Oldsmobile. The State Attorney General's Office ranks Oldsmobile the best make overall, import or domestic. Drive the number one CR with airbag, anti-lock brakes, power steering, automatic air conditioning, and more, only $14,995. Come on up past Lexus, Toyota, and all the rest. Your drive is at the top, Oldsmobile. Read it for yourself at your Oldsmobile Edge retailer. Bosnian Serbs are firing at NATO warplanes as they continue their drive toward the government-held town of Bihać. There, a small group of Muslim defenders refuses to surrender. And at this hour, the UN is now demanding a ceasefire. Christiana Amanpour has more. Shells fall. A house is set ablaze. 
Some people shunt across a dangerous intersection sheltered by a UN armored vehicle. But Sarajevo is a sideshow. Right now, the main event is in Bihać, where Serbs are well inside the safe area and a furious Bosnian Prime Minister accuses the UN of aiding and abetting their advance by refusing to call for airstrikes. There is no turning the key on the part of the United Nations. And it's time to tell the truth. They do not want to do it. I'm sorry to say this, General Rose is right here, standing right there. And I am telling him, it is your responsibility to call for the airstrikes, or you are not doing your job. Doing the job of a divided international community, General Rhodes listens to the Bosnian government accuse him of stalling, while the Bosnian Serb leader, Radovan Karadic, pulls no punches. We are not going to stop this time. We are not going to give them a breath. We are not going to accept any ceasefire. And on Serb TV, they issue an ultimatum to the Bosnian army, surrender or else. You are surrounded on all sides. If you do not listen to me at this time, the Serb army will be forced to chase the men of the 5th Corps. It will be hard to separate the guilty from the innocent. With Bihać on the brink, one UN briefer couldn't bring himself to tell it as it is. Well, you can make your own assessment there of this man. My mathematics is not always very strong, but you have the opportunity to look afterwards. In fact, his own it's map about shows about a third of the Bihaj safe area has already fallen to the Serbs. So far, limited NATO air action has neither stopped nor slowed the Serbs. Even as the last air wave was airborne, houses were seen burning on the outskirts of the safe area. More people seen fleeing as their village fell. The UN now calls the situation in Bihaj critical, a possible turning point in a war that has seen so many. Last-ditch attempts are underway to get the two sides to come to a ceasefire. But by evening, there was no deal, for the Bosnian government only rose his role as an honest broker at risk. Christiana Manpur, CNN, Sarajevo. Yes, our Arafat's self-rule government in Gaza is reeling from another blow by Islamic militant opponents tonight. Some 20,000 Islamic militants shouting for a holy war rally in the Gaza Strip. Officially, it was a gathering to remember a founder of the Islamic Armed Underground. He was killed a year ago, but it's also another test of the besieged PLO leader's ability to make self-rule work in the face of growing and violent opposition, mostly from the militant group Hamas. Two American bishops are joining the circle of the advisors closest to Pope John Paul. The two are among 30 from around the world who are being elevated from bishop to cardinal. They join the most exclusive men's club in the world, those who will choose the successor to the pontiff when he dies. All of the men are seen as conservatives among the church, and the appointments put John Paul's conservative stamp on whoever is likely to succeed him. Okay, and good news back home. There's a happy ending to that search in Atlanta at the National Forest. They did find the two-year-old little girl. That is the way we news. like it to yes. end. Still ahead on the 10 o'clock news, a tail wagging time at the Trump's place tonight. We'll take you inside Marilago and talk to the host and hostess. And a bit later, uniforms making a fashion statement all right here on Fox 29, your In Vogue station. Chrysler broke its all-time sales record, and your Dodge dealer is leading the way with price-shattering deals on every Dodge in stock, including great deals on America's only true midsize pickup, Dodge Dakota, like a lease rate of just $189 a month for 36 months with $1,000 down. And that includes features like air conditioning, rear anti-lock brakes, AM, FM cassette, and more. Record sales mean price-shattering deals, but only at your friendly Gold Star Dodge dealer now. Some kids in Delray Beach are getting the message, be good. That's right, because it's that time of year. Santa is watching. Santa Claus made his big entrance at the Delray Beach Mall, along with characters from Beauty and the Beast. Winnie the Pooh was on hand as well. The kids were overjoyed at all the attention. But the highlight of the day, of course, is sitting on Santa's lap with the Christmas wish list. Well, I want a fish with a fish tank aquarium. Jaguar Super. Sega CD, Sega, uh, new shoes, new socks. At the top of the list, the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers and Sega video games. And oh, yes, one child wants a new family dog. You, is that what you want, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers? Um, well, if I was eight, I probably oh. would. But, you know, I was at the Delray Mall today, and I saw this pile of snow, and I thought, what's going on? 
I should have put two and two well, together. Of course. I should That's have. Obvious. Okay, right there. Santa was there. Stay right here for more. Claudia Shea is rushing back from Mar a Lago. She's going to take us inside. And we'll also tell you why people in Canada are demanding an apology from a judge. That's right, an abortion clinic that's gone to the extreme. It looks like a fortress. We'll show it to you next on the 10 o'clock news. After Thanksgiving sale, a tradition of savings for the entire family. A dazzling collection of jewelry, 20 to 50 percent, plus an extra 10 percent off. All women's coats, designer, and more, 25 to 50 percent, plus bonus dollars off. Men's leather bombers, $89.99. Luxurious two-ply cashmere sweaters, $79.99. Cashmere line leather gloves, $39.99. Macy's sensational after Thanksgiving sale. Shop extra holiday hours, now through Sunday. Lexus SC300. Price to fly. Whether you buy or lease at Lexus of Palm Beach. No one is laughing at a comment made by a Canadian judge after ruling on a child sex abuse case in which the defendant was convicted of funneling three girls between the ages of 12 and 15. The judge said, quote, if these were 35-year-old women, I might smile and throw it out of court. The judge says his remarks were careless, but he stopped short of apologizing. I find it quite appalling that a judge would come out in this day and age with such a statement. The man is going to serve a month in jail and 300 hours of community service. The judge for now is off the hook. Police in Vancouver, Canada are releasing composite drawings of two men believed to be involved in the shooting of an abortion doctor there. A gynecologist, Garson Romualis, was seriously injured after a bullet shattered his leg while he was eating breakfast. Police say they have no suspects, only a composite drawing of the man they believe is responsible. Police also say another man may be involved. He allegedly made telephone calls to the doctor's wife one day before that shooting occurred. Violence against abortion clinics has prompted a Reno, Nevada women's clinic to go on the defensive in a big way. Don Knapp shows us how the clinic resembles now a mini Fort Knox. This is all a fiber optic. Dr. Bundle. Damon Stutes has one of the most unusual medical practices around. We've had physical threats. We've had uh, bombings, fire bombings, um, uh, projectiles shot through windows. Stutes responded by building one of the most advanced abortion clinics in the country. State-of-the-art operating rooms surrounded by a state-of-the-art fortress. As I get into my car to go home, um, I can check every possible ambush area around me um, on camera. And uh, then I can raise the garage door remotely and get the hell out. The Reno, Nevada abortion doctor says anti-abortion extremists attacked his previous clinic 57 times. Calls to the clinic got to be regular fare for Reno police. We've had multiple cases of previous people being arrested for, uh, uh, say, arsons, destruction of property. Increasing violence against abortion doctors and clinics around the country prompted Stute's million-dollar investment in his women's clinic. Solid concrete walls, bulletproof glass, sensors and security cameras. And anti-abortion activists blamed demented people for the violence. Certainly we can't be responsible for some demented lone uh, person that goes out and decides to commit some violence on, on anybody. But um, as I said, I think that the, the violent taking of the lives of unborn children is a part of that whole culture of violence. A steel gate and 70 feet of buffer space help protect the clinic and its patients. They feel that everything's, you know, very confidential. Everything's very secure here. 
Yeah, they love it here. The level of tension of the staff and myself and the patients has just dropped. I mean, it's like going into a normal place. Stutes won't say whether he's armed, but claims he's an excellent marksman. They're not going to stop me. They're going to have to kill me, and they know that. But at least in this place, they cross onto my private property. I have private property rights. Stutes says just opening his new clinic will likely trigger more attacks from extremists who want to scare him and others away from performing abortions. Don Knapp, CNN, reporting. Okay, a lot more ahead for you here on the 10 o'clock news. In our second half hour, Chris Farrell offers us a first look at tomorrow's weather. Also ahead, cops say a thief in a nurse's uniform is trapping unsuspecting patients in a web of deceit. The Ambigators and Knowles tie one on in Tallahassee today. <laughs> it's all right here on Fox 29, your 10 o'clock news station. You're watching the 10 o'clock news on Fox 29. Dateline, October 1994. Florida State Study reports Oldsmobile the top-ranked make, the best make, Oldsmobile. The State Attorney General's Office ranks Oldsmobile the best make overall, import or domestic. Drive Cutlass Supreme, including dual airbags, anti-lock brakes, air conditioning, power windows, and more, only $17,995. Come on up past Lexus, Toyota, and all the rest. Your drive is at the top, Oldsmobile. Read it for yourself at your Oldsmobile Edge retailer. Okay, listen up. We've got 30 seconds to tell you about Park Furniture's wall-to-wall -wall clear out sale. Owners have ordered all 94 stock to be sold to the bare walls. Take advantage of the seven-piece living room package, only $7.99. Or the six-piece waterfall bedroom set, just $5.89. Check out Park Furniture's three-room, 21-piece condo package, on sale now for just $16.99. Park Furniture offers choice, service, and great selection for every room in your home, plus free same-day delivery. See the difference during the wall-to-wall -wall clear out at Park Furniture and Interiors, West Palm Beach and Green Acres. Hey guys, trust me, don't let your wife see this commercial. It's the Shoe Warehouse. Thousands of shoes, one price, $9.99. 100,000 pairs in stock and trucks arriving daily. The Shoe Warehouse, the hottest styles in ladies, men's, and kids' shoes at below wholesale prices. They're all $9.99. This one and that one and all of those and these, all just $9.99. The Shoe Warehouse, open seven days a week. Fort Lauderdale, Pompano, and now Delray Beach. Happy holidays from your friends at the Shoe Warehouse. The Shoe Warehouse, every shoe all the time, $9.99. It is a world of spaciousness. It is Avalon. Extraordinary comfort that creates a serene environment. Engineering that virtually eliminates noise and vibration. Establishing a higher level of elegance than any Toyota ever. Avalon, the new flagship from Toyota. Experience the tranquility. It's the hottest invitation in town, a black tie party hosted tonight by Donald at Mar-a-Lago. That's right. It's also seen as a real trump card, you might say, for the pets that will benefit. And just back from the party, Claudia Shea joins us now from the update desk with the inside scoop on tonight's yes. benefit bash. Claudia. <laughs> you get all the good assignments, don't I you? I certainly the do, Stones especially. Stones last night, tonight's Mar-a-Lago. Oh, just another day, another story, right? Jeff Leslie, about 200 people showed up at Mar-a-Lago tonight, dressed to the nines and ready to help the Save a Pet organization. But helping a good cause wasn't the only draw for many people. It was a first ever glimpse into what is said to be Palm Beach's finest and most elegant mansion. Donald and Marla Trump opened their Palm Beach mansion, Mar-a-Lago, to people supporting a cause they hold dear. The founder of the Save-A-Pet organization, Gertrude Maxwell, greeted those turning out to raise money for her project. Save-A-Pet tries to do everything to sustain their life and find homes for them. So this is so important because this function will help us save many, many more lives. Little Tiffany Trump attended the benefit on the arm of her mom. Both were gracious hostesses. I'm just, once again, proud to be able to have a home where people come and will we'll give to a good cause. And all we have to do is open the doors and make sure everything's in perfect order and, and greet all the, all the people that care. 
Mar-a-Lago is nothing short of a treasure. It resembles a European palace with its gilded ceilings and fine furnishings. The mansion was built by Marjorie Merriweather Post in 1927. Donald Trump purchased it in 1985. A portion of the sprawling estate is expected to become a private club in January or February. It's unbelievable the number of members that we've gotten. Everybody's joining. It's really hot. It's been a really hot kind of a thing, and I'm very happy about it. Donald allowed us a special tour of the mansion through its sprawling halls, a kitchen with so much china that 34 people staying here for a month, eating three meals a day, would never see the same china pattern twice. Now, this is the room where Michael Jackson slept while staying here with the Trumps earlier this year. Come on, let me show you the rest of his accommodations. Follow the stairway up from that room, and you feel you are on top of the world. You know that tower you see from South Ocean Boulevard? This is what it looks like from the inside. And this is the view looking out. Mar-a-Lago has been a gathering place for stars and world leaders since it was built. Tonight, it's humbly a gathering place for those wanting to save animals. The Save a Pet organization was founded 24 years ago. Now, its goal is to find homes for abandoned animals and spare them from being destroyed. No word yet on how much money was raised tonight, but my guess is it was a lot. Jeff and Leslie, back to you. Mm. Wow, I've been there a few times, never got past the living room. <laughs> I know, I have always been wanting to go up in that tower, and tonight Donald Trump was very gracious in allowing us to go up there. A beautiful wow. place. That's very beautiful. Right. Okay, very cool. I'm surprised Thanks. you came back. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're happy she came back, yes, right? <laughs> yes. Okay, well, a warning to people in Northern California tonight. Stay inside. A powerful winter snowstorm is whipping the area with 100-mile-an-hour winds. For a short time, two major freeways had to be shut down. One of them links Northern California to the rest of the nation. The storm has already dumped nearly three feet of the white stuff in central Sierra Nevada. And poor Chris. You know, you should try to get a date with Claudia Shea because she's in all the right places. I'm still waiting on my invitation from last year. It'll come. Don't yeah, worry. What you just saw there in Man. California, that could easily be Pennsylvania, Ohio, New York, Michigan, Wisconsin, or anybody else tomorrow. Big wow, major wind storm. across. Huh? And uh, we'll get a little bit of this cool air in a couple of days. First of all, outside, the radar. And it's showing us a couple of light showers, which have been kind of hanging around the coast here. Nothing too heavy. But rain is rain, and there it is right there. And those showers have been just on the coast there, close to Jupiter, for about the past hour or so. And they're drifting very slowly towards the southwest at about 10 miles an hour. Highs and lows today, it was a nice day. The high temperature and low temperature were just about normal. Normal high is 78, normal low is 62, so almost on the numbers there in the gardens. 78 at the airport today, 61 the morning low. Lake Worth, 79 and 63. Boca, I like to see that when we get down in the low 60s this far south because you got the Gulf Stream out here, and that's warm water headed north, and that generally keeps Boca and the South County areas a little bit warmer. So you got some cool air last night. Pahokee down to 61 and Boynton Beach to 62 this morning, and daytime highs right around 81. Vero Beach, you got a little rain today, about a tenth of an inch, and dropped down to 57 for a low this morning. 56 and out Okeechobee by the lake, and 59 in Stewart, and all the highs were in the upper 70s. Major winter storm taking up almost the southern one-third of the country and the northeastern one-quarter of the country. These are all the winter storm watches, warnings, and advisories that are in effect for the next 24 to 36 hours. All of these states have some sort of weather warning for this winter storm from blowing and drifting snow to heavy rain to high wind warnings and possibilities of heavy snow. And look how this thing is just going to plow through the east in the next 24 hours. It's heavy snow out west right now, some light rain ahead of it, but man, this stuff is really coming down. Mammoth out in Nevada had 25 inches of snow, Sugar Bowl had 36, and Steamboats had 10 inches, and all this is headed east. The forecast machine coming up after we check the nation for Sunday.
Tomorrow's weather map, if you've got friends in the Northeast or the Midwest, they're going to be phoning home tomorrow down here because they are wanting to leave in a big hurry. This snowstorm is going to produce perhaps 15 inches of snow in Pennsylvania, New York State, and upper and lower Michigan in the next 24 hours. Not happy about that. We'll be windy down here. Our wind will be coming up with the moisture and providing all that moisture for the heavy snow in the Northeast tomorrow in the next couple of days. Here at home, boaters, the wind increasing tomorrow. It was nice out there today, but here comes a big blow tomorrow from the southeast at 20 knots. Three to five foot seas, everything inland will be choppy. And low tide, 845 tomorrow morning. Fair and mild tonight. Now, we've had a few isolated showers. No big deal, but it is rain. Low temperature, 58 in the west to around 63 here in the eastern part of the counties. Tomorrow, mostly sunny, breezy, and warmer. The high temperature reaching around 80 along the beaches, 85 degrees well inland. So we're warming up for the next couple of days, and then we get colder. Got the antifreeze in the old forecast machine. Oh, got, got an oil change it's and we're ready up. to go. Here we are. Tomorrow and Monday, mostly sunny, warm and breezy for the next two days. Then Wednesday, uh, Tuesday, here comes the cold front and we'll be getting chilly for a couple of days. So two warm, breezy days, one rainy day, and then two cooler days. That's a pretty okay. nice spread. That's a kind of a nice spread. Uh, I like that, huh? Yeah, enjoy that. Everybody fed and happy now? Yeah, we're set. you have a nice Thanksgiving? <laughs> yes, we did. Good. Just finished the turkey. Good. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. Still ahead on the 10 o'clock news, it's a football rivalry that just can't seem to be settled in. Oliver re reports from the FSU Florida game in Tallahassee. Plus a bungled burglary when a suspected thief returns to the scene of the crime. And a bandit with a prescription for trouble. It's all right here on the 10 o'clock news. Fox NFL Sunday. It's the number one pregame show on TV. I think the country can breathe a, a, a sigh of relief. Through 11 weeks, the pregame team that's never lost in the ratings. I like guarantees. Then... Conway throws it up for grabs. Downfield tip and it deflected. Touchdown! The Bears, with their red-hot quarterback Steve Walsh, travel to Buddy's backyard to face the Cardinals. Chicago versus Arizona. Sunday on Fox 29. America has spoken. Ford Taurus is officially the best-selling car in America, again. No wonder Taurus delivers quality and value, like 2.9% financing or $750 cash back. That's right, buy a Taurus today and get 2.9% financing up to 48 months or $750 cash back. Or lease one for just $249 a month. Either way, you'll win with Ford Taurus, the people's choice. Ford Taurus, America's best-selling car. The town of Eastwick has an enchanting visitor. Are you ready, ladies? And everyone's under his spell. Ocus Pocus. Who are you, really? That's the woman for me. But his charm is brewing up chaos. I want a little respect! <laughs> Jack Nicholson, Cher, Susan Sarandon, Michelle Pfeiffer, the witches of Eastwick. Sunday on Fox 29. Southeast Florida Acura dealers bring you an exciting opportunity to experience the grandeur of Broadway Theater in London, England. Stop by your neighborhood Acura dealer and test drive the new 1995 Acura Legend and register to win this unique experience. Eight grand prize winners will receive a trip for two to London on Virgin Atlantic Airways, the official airline of the Acura Broadway series. In London, be Acura's guest at a major theatrical event in the historic West End Theater District. Acura Broadway series opening night tickets will also be awarded, so be a part of the splendor and majesty that is the Acura Broadway series. Well, it must have been cold in Long Island, New York. How cold? So cold that a suspected burglar actually went back to the house that he had just robbed in search of his hat and gloves. It wasn't a good move, though, returning to the scene of the crime. Say police had cost him his freedom. Instead of finding his hat and gloves, the suspected thief found his victim at home and already on the phone to police. I would imagine that if you would, you would feel if you were lucky enough to get away, stay away. But we were very fortunate that he went back. Well, a chase ensued. The suspect was caught. Police say he is a suspect in a half a dozen burglaries in that area. Men easily fall victim to a New York woman dressed in a nurse's uniform. She portrays a damsel in distress. Well, as Mario Vasquez reports, once she's inside her victim's car, the act and the wallets suddenly disappear. The next thing is she had a hand on my leg, and in spite of a split second, I keep my money loose in my pocket. She had... $220 out of my pocket. She prowls Nassau County parking lots, hunting just the right prey. An older man, 
with expensive wheels. The first thing they see, a smiling face in a nurse's outfit having car problems. Cops say it's a prescription for trouble when the sexy bandit asks for a ride. Did she say anything suggestive to you at all? Uh, yeah. Yeah. The usual talk. But, uh, you know, I just went along, you know. I figured I was going to give her a lift a few blocks and I was on my way home. She starts telling him, uh, starts talking to him, uh, usually in a, a, a dialogue involving some type of sex, and she'll grab them in a groin area, distracting them long enough to take their wallet or money. A composite sketch was pulled together from the 15 reported victims over four years. Some lost up to $1,000, but this victim wants to warn others that the woman posing as a home health care worker just wants to take you to the cleaners. You try to be nice, you try to give somebody a lift, and uh, yeah, that's what happens. It's thought she has an accomplice to pick her up after the grope and grab is over. Cops say so far no one has been injured in these heists. They say some people have even gotten lucky, getting their wallets back, but with no money and no fingerprints. Police are checking to see if there's more hanky-panky than they're being told with the elusive suspect described as a black female. Five feet five, uh, stocky build, oval face. I learned not to pick up anybody anymore. It don't pay. In Levittown, Long Island, Mario Bosquez, Fox News. Wow, you just can't trust anybody. Well, it doesn't sound like the victims are too smart either. No, not in this case. So, well, did you know that your postman is actually making a fashion statement every single day? He does. So do a lot of other folks in uniform. It's delivery tray chic next, right here on your 10 o'clock news station. A Rio Dodge, the Palm Beach's Dodge Giant is in trouble. Due to an overshipment, we have to eat some profit. We must move 400 cars and trucks this month, and we're serious. We'll have extra staff and specially trained finance counselors on hand continuously to make certain you get the best deal. Get out of that old clunker and into a new 95 Neon from just 7476 with your four grand. Or 95 Intrepids from 13573 with your four. And we'll pay off your trade no matter what you owe. A Rigo Dodge, where buyers compare and our competitors just stare. On Okeechobee Boulevard. Hi, I'm Alex Randolph, owner of Hubcap Warehouse, now in Stewart and West Palm. If you're looking for custom wheels, we have them cheap, cheaper than anybody. We also have a complete line of original equipment wheels. Again, we'll beat anybody's price. Yes, we sell new and used tires. Yes, we sell them cheap. And of course, Hubcap Warehouse has the largest selection of new and used hubcaps in South Florida. Whether it's a hubcap, tire, or wheel, there's never a charge for installation. It's free. So see us today, Hubcap Warehouse, the bright pink buildings, both in Stewart and West Palm, where no one, and I mean no one, sells for less. Through this Thanksgiving weekend only, due to overwhelming response and continued demand, Rooms to Go will repeat their incredible delayed payment finance offer. Shop through 9 p.m. Monday. Put no money down, pay no interest, and make no payments until May 1995. Plus, pay in full by May 1st, you pay no interest. That's the Rooms to Go delayed payment finance offer. Repeated by popular demand through 9 p.m. Monday, November 28th. Don't miss this last opportunity. Rooms to Go! S.O.S. S.O.S. Wayne Acres Ford in Lake Worth is in a seriously overstocked situation. We've got a lot full of America's most popular vehicles. They must be sale priced and sold immediately. For example, just $179 a month puts you in a new 95 Escort LX with all this. Just $189 a month and you own a new Ranger pickup. We must clear out this inventory now. Wayne says they're stacking too deep, so sell them cheap. It's a seriously overstocked situation. At Wayne Acres Ford. 10th Avenue North in Lake Worth. An international fashion statement is Vietnam and Russia get in vogue. Fashion designer Junko Koshino showing off a spring and summer collection at the Vietnam Soviet Cultural Palace in Hanoi, Vietnam. This after a successful showing in Paris and Singapore, the Japanese designer presented some ethnic Japanese designs in modern European styles. The latest fashion trend is delivery chic. It's a craze that has some companies like UPS and Federal Express pretty worried. In tonight's Fox Style News, Amy Atkins shows us this newfound fashion statement. Oh, yes, wait a, minute, Mr. Postman. a special fashion delivery this season, the postal imposter look. It's cool because not everybody has it. It's not necessarily a fashion trend. It kind of transcends fashion in a way because people actually use it and it was designed <clears throat> 
for a specific purpose that has nothing to do with uh, looking good. A lot of people, they don't want to look like fashion models anymore. They want to look like blue collar, you know, white trash. If you want to look like your mailman, maybe you should think about stripes, too. You can be fined $100 and sent to jail for wearing an unauthorized uniform. It's a weird honor. UPS is a little worried about the newfound popularity of their uniform, designed at the turn of the century to disguise dirt. Drivers are getting uh, offers on the street, and uh, they know that if they got to come back in, if we know that a uh, driver is showing up and needs a hat every three days, we've got a problem. Delivery chic comes at the height of a general trend of wearing the uniform of a job you don't have. Mark Lewis wears Goodyear. My tire on my car blew out, so I went to get it fixed, and I went to a non-Goodyear place with this jacket on, and they asked me why am I coming here to get a tire when I work for Goodyear. FedEx keeps such a close watch on its uniforms, they're nearly impossible to get on the black market which, of course, makes them the most sought after. Amy Atkins, Fox Style News. OK, I can see you in a postal uniform. <laughs> <laughs> OK, I'll deliver your mail. That's all right. But mm. well, just in time for Christmas, though. You're right. You're going to be busy. That's right. Coming up on Fox 29 Sports, we don't have uniforms here. Can the Canes fly past the soaring eagles? We have highlights from the Orange Bowl. That's a good thing, too, is it's less than yes, And it Bobby is. versus Steve, Danny versus Danny. Well, it's the Gators taking on the Knolls. Rick looks at one of the great games of the year. Sports this is next. Have you been fishing for a new automobile? Well, your South Florida Chrysler Plymouth dealers offer you today's catch of the day. Plymouth Neon, the friendly four-door that comes standard with a 16-valve, 132-horsepower engine, dual airbags, and a whole bunch of fun. Very catching at $10,000 for starters, 13.7 nicely equipped. So hook into the catch of the day. See your South Florida Chrysler Plymouth dealer today. Delray Shooting Center is your complete firearms dealer and shooting facility with top quality firearms and accessories for everyone from the novice to the expert. You'll find the lowest prices in South Florida on ammunition, collectible and work knives, and other shooting supplies. Delray Shooting Center carries a full line from all major firearm manufacturers and is one of the most safe and modern certified indoor shooting ranges in South Florida, offering classes for the Florida Concealed Weapons License and all skill levels. For the best value, competitive prices, and a full service gunsmith staff, see the pros at Delray Shooting Center, Delray Beach. Sunday, see one of the classic episodes that made the X-Files a runaway hit. Mother! The best of the X-Files. Then Homer's ah! caught in the scandal of the year. Now he's public enemy number one. Come on, I'm a decent guy. On a brand new Simpsons. And is Al Bundy man enough to take on baseball's greatest players? Absolutely. freaking lutely A brand new Married with Children followed by the George Collins Show. It all starts Sunday at 7, 6 Central. This holiday weekend, car dealers will advertise special sales and limited time offers. At Bev Smith Ford, we don't need a holiday to save you money. Our no-hassle price tags are posted on every car and truck, every day. Who do you think really saves you money? The car dealer that does it for three days, or the people that do it every day? Bev Smith Ford. How do you want to buy your next car or truck? The old way or the no-hassle way? At Bev Smith's Four Floors of Fords. Okay, I'm really trying to fit in. I watched this game. You're really <laughs> trying it's to okay fit you're doing in. Well, good no, job. Well, listen, I, oh, was, okay. I was really interested, started paying attention, sloppy first half. I, uh -huh. And then I had to leave. <laughs> sloppy if you're a Florida State fan. The Gators yes. played pretty good in the first half, and the Knowles really played good in the fourth quarter, <laughs> and we'll tell you what happened. It's a game, it's a college football game that fans here in the state will be talking about for years to come. Some of the players on Florida, Florida State, they grew up together, but today there is a stronger tie between these two teams. Sports, direct, sports director Dan Oliver was on the sidelines for this rivalry. He has the story. They, they, they ridiculed us and kept and kicked our, you know what, in our backyard. Those already had my answer. <laughs> Danny Werfel found the answer by going deep against FSU secondary and hitting home runs. Hitting a wide open Aubrey Hill who outran the FSU secondary 7-3. Werfel made it 14 to 3. Jack Jackson in the corner of the end zone. And the Gators starting to feel confident. On the other side, Danny Cannell was under fire. Late in the half, he's hit and fumbled, recovered by Tallahassee native Kevin Carter. And after Werfel and Cannell traded interceptions, Werfel found Jackson in single coverage and burned Corey Fuller for the touchdown. 24 3 Gators at the half. And after Werfel went over the top for the quarterback sneak to make it 31 to 3, you could stick a fork in FSU. They look done. 
Certain reporters were even putting the finishing touches on their stories. Well, you got to hand it to Coach Steve Spurrier. He's had trouble here in Tallahassee, but he really handled this game with flair. Rick Flair. Hey, Coach Steve Spurrier is the greatest coach in college. Yeah, the Gators are the best team in football. Wait a minute, Flair. It ain't over till it's over. Someone wearing number 13, could it have been Cannell? Caught fire, finding all the right receivers and even running in the touchdown that brought FSU to within seven. That's the same guy that's been there all year, but everyone expecting him to come out there and fill Charlie Ward's shoes, and no one can really do that. He's Danny Cannell, and I guess he showed it at the end of this ball game what he could actually do. And after a warful interception like Ward, Cannell knew to get it to Warwick Dunn, who made the Gators miss and set up his teammate, Rock Preston, who went in from the four, and the Gators were fit to be tied, 31 all. You know, I know a lot of fans and media have been doubting me, but I mean, I never gave up and, you know, just kept fighting all the way then. And I mean, you know, like I said, we wish we would have had a win, but, you know, we'll settle for a tie. You know, I guess we got two relaxed, like I said, you know, and they came out and played hard. A lot of, a lot of big plays. Uh, we had a lot of chances. Uh, heck, ended up a tie. Don't know what else to say. Folks, I've been saying it all year. <laughs> you all right? Oh, uh... It ain't funny. <laughs> Rather have a win, naturally. But remember, now, we snatched a tie out of the jaws of defeat. <laughs> so now the Gators move on to the Southeastern Conference Championship game against Alabama next weekend, while FSU waits to see where they'll go bowling in the postseason. In Tallahassee, Dan Oliver for the 10 o'clock news. All right, thank you, Dan. The Gators need to get themselves together. They play next weekend in the SEC title game against Alabama. For a chance to play in the Sugar Bowl, the Knolls still have a shot at a trip to the Orange Bowl, but they need some help from B.C. A Boston College win over Miami, and the Knolls will play Nebraska in an Orange Bowl rematch. A Miami win, and they play in the Orange Bowl New Year's night. The other story tonight, well, this is the 10th anniversary of Doug Flutie's Hail Mary pass for B.C. to beat the Canes back in 84. Flutie flushed, throws it down, caught by Boston College, I don't believe it! Oh, oh boy, I bet you that's hard to look at if you're a Hurricanes fan, but since then Miami went on to win national titles in 87, 89, and 91. A great view of the Orange Bowl on a great night for football. Boston College comes in 14-point underdogs, but they score the game's first touchdown. Mark Hartzell finds everybody's All-American at tight end Pete Mitchell. Mitchell crosses the line, 7 to zip, B.C. And in Eagles coach Doug Dan Henning likes what he sees. The Canes had trouble scoring in the first half thanks to a tenacious B.C. defense. Costa gets sacked here for the sixth time in the game. Frank would get up and lead Miami to a third-quarter touchdown. Costa finds number six, Trent Jones. Frank's Frank likes to hook up with the Joneses. This time he finds Chris T. Jones. Chris T. from Cardinal Newman High School from here in West Palm Beach. Catches the pass, makes it 20-7 with the 27-yard play. Right now the Canes lead late in this game, 23-7. It looks like they will play in Miami. Nebraska is the opponent January 1st. The tale of two coaches in the Big Ten, Paterno and George Perlis. Perlis out of football after 12 years with the Spartans. Michigan State tries to win one for George. Quarterback Tony Banks finds Derek Mason on a 31-yard touchdown pass. MSU leads 7-0, but number two Penn State takes control with an unpaterno-like play. Tailback Mike Archie finds Bobby Ingram for a 55-yard touchdown pass. The Nittany Lions take the lead for good. The story today, Penn State back Kajana Carter scores five touchdowns. This kid makes his statement for the Heisman. Running for 227 yards, the Nittany Lions finish the regular season 11-0. Kansas State finishes up 9-2. The Irish looking to win their 12th straight over USC. Mississippi State wins this in-state rivalry. Bethune-Cookman wins the Florida Classic over FAMU. Tomorrow, the Dolphins try to stop a two-game losing streak. A Miami win would also give the Finns a two-game lead in the AFC East. The Jets stand in their way. Kickoff is at 1 o'clock tomorrow. New York has won four of their last six games. Last year, Charlie Ward was the hero of the Florida-Florida State game, going 38 for 53 for 446 yards of passing. Charlie is now in the NBA today. He rides the pines for the Knicks. Ward does not play against the Hornets in Madison Square Garden. The Eastern Conference champs held an 11-point first quarter lead thanks to Patrick Ewing. Gets the shot to fall. Patrick had 22 points today. The Hornets break this game wide open in the second half. A sweet shot here by Hersey. Hersey Hawkins has 11 points for Charlotte. The big story for the Hornets. Grandmama Larry Johnson scores 23 points. Charlotte wins by 10, giving the Knicks their first home loss of the year. Washington still winless with Chris Webber. 
Weber. D. Brown leads Boston over Philly. The Cavs win by 14. Orlando leads the Sonics have an edge in Houston. Denver flying high. A good game in progress right now in Phoenix. In college hoops, the 1993 champs start their season today in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, taking on a surprisingly tough Texas team. The Longhorns looking good. Broderick Anderson with a nice pass to Terrence Wrencher. Texas actually has a lead in this game with four minutes left in the game, but then UNC takes the lead for good when the Super Softs, McGinnis to Rasheed Wallace to Jerry Stackhouse for the bucket. Stackhouse at 28 points. Wallace, who scores here on a putback, scores 20 points. North Carolina should be the new number one after their four-point win today over Texas. Kentucky wins by 74. No lie. UCLA wins easy by 23. Duke also by 23. The Jayhawks 83-65 winners. Tech doubles up on Florida a and M, and uh, Dolphins play tomorrow. But uh, the big story: good game today, close game. It really was. You a said it was sloppy tie. early. Who would have thought a tie? Does anybody leave happy? That's the real question. Well, no. they'll settle for a tie. <laughs> That's what they said. They got okay. to. Okay, yeah. they've got to. You're right. right. And Miami Dolphins tomorrow. Okay, Rick. Thanks a lot. And that is it for us here on your Saturday night Fox 29 News Station. Have a great evening. We'll see you tomorrow.